We're here in Los Angeles for the Fit Expo, and I'm gonna check out what interesting stuff they've got going on inside. Slash from Slash Ropes, I love the energy. Tell me a bit about your company. Yeah, thank you so much. So Slush Ropes, you know, mainly provides premium and colorful, vibrant flow ropes, which looks like a jump rope, but not quite. Their original um, flow rope is actually made by David Webb. Um, he's also the man who systemized rope flow and, of course, the half balance ball that we all have seen in these. Right. So what was, what was your inspiration and reason for building a, a company around ropes? Yeah, so, you know, this started during the pandemic. I wasn't trying to start a company. I was just trying to um, fix a problem that I had. And I was looking for a slightly thicker rope. And, you know, I wanted some colors. And at that time, you know, it didn't really exist. Um, besides like a black rope or like a red rope. And I wanted to bring my, my own flair to it because at the end of the day, I see myself more as a creative and as an artist um, rather than, you know, um, an athlete. That's just kind of the byproduct of it. And that's what makes rope flow so beautiful. What was the, um, I guess, uh, from, a, from a sort of a movement and workout perspective, like what, what was your inspiration like were you a dancer were you using ropes for jumping like your colleague tell me about that yeah so um i actually aspire to be a professional jump roper and something that they don't tell you is that there's such thing as overtraining and at that time i was um i was barely overweight and i was just using my ankles all day you know every single day i would jump for about two three hours and you know throughout that time uh, my ankles were giving out and so you know I was kind of thinking of a way of like hey what is it that I can do um, still work with the ropes everything I know about jump rope without having to jump right and so through Instagram I found this thing called rope flow and um, you know I was just like in love with it because it's the idea of still working with the ropes without having to jump it. And for regular people, like who, who, what are some of the people then that could, could use this? Is, would this be, I know when I did a session with David, they were using it almost like as a mobility thing before you work out. So right. talk a bit about the, the ways that it's being used and the type of people that could benefit from this type of training. Yeah, I, I really love what you said. So the way, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. The way I view it is, you know, I am just an extension of what David Weck has created. And I respect him so much. I love the, you know, the, the work that he's done in his lifetime. And for me, my goal is to extend that to the average mom, to, you know, like to, to some brother or someone who's just has a nine to five office job working at home you know, not really moving too much because what David Weck does is he elevates all the professional athletes. And in my opinion and my own perspective, I come in as just another, you know, normal person, you know, and trying to inspire just, you know, your average, you know, person as well. Right. So, yeah. How would someone fit this into what they do? Because when I, when I was looking at it, it, it was, uh, my brother does quite a bit, my brother Richie, um, is, is I, I quite like the fact that you can just sort of, you know, you can be at, at your office, you can wake up in right. the morning. It's, it's quite a nice thing that you can do throughout your life. So how are you, how are you getting people to fit it into um, their day-to-day their -day schedule? Oh yeah, I like that. So for me, it's very simple. I just make it look fun, simple, and not too complicated. So, um, you know, you learn about rope flow through Weck Method or through David Weck, and he will give you the, the scientific breakdown as far as how this makes you a better athlete. And for me, the way that I transpose that is like, look, I'm having fun. If you know how to count to four, you know, this, you can do it. And um, if it's fun for the average person, it's going to be sustainable. And that's that's, that's pretty, it. Right. It's, it's simple. It's and what kind of what kind of people have you found that have really got you know enjoyed doing this this type of stuff? Like, what's what's your audience and what? What's, yeah. what's, what are they saying about it? Yeah, so my typical demographic is actually like 
fairly like the older crowd, which I absolutely love. Um, you know, for the most part, it's a knee thing or an ankle or foot thing that prevents them from jumping rope. I introduce it to them. I show them other ways to use the rope, whether it's just stretching, you know, just getting your body moving in a way that fits their own lifestyle. Right. What's your, uh, what's, 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 how long's your company been going and, and what's, what's your business model then? Yeah, so Slush Ropes uh, started out in 2020 and, um, you know, before it became an actual business, people were just messaging me because they wanted to buy the rope I'm using and, you know, it, at that time it was just something I made and then eventually it became its own thing. So, um, I guess to answer your question, like, um, I, I really, really want to bring the, the vibrant colors, the flair, and the art into the rope. And the rope is just a vessel to do exactly what I want to do, which is to express, you know, creativity. And, and just looking at this, like these are these are really cool. I, where, where are you? How did how did you get into making the products? What and designing it and finding a manufacturer and how, did, how tell me a bit about that process? Yeah, so that's actually. Um, Kind of like from my previous life, I, I'm also a musician and in my early 20s I was very um, obsessed with, um, what do you call it, like fixing up vintage drum sets and things like that. So when it comes to like putting things together, the craftsmanship, things like that, I personally enjoyed that process. Where are these made? Uh, these are made from, this one is specifically from Canada, but I do make them all myself after I order them. Where do you get the, the rope itself from? This one is from Canada. Look, it's from Canada. So you get the rope and then what, what do you get them like pre-made in colors to you? Yeah, I get them from Canada to um, have them braid it exactly how I need it. And then um, they ship it to me and then I do the rest. Nice. And what about these little end things? Uh, that one, yeah, we, I make that in-house as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. So normally this stuff's done in Asia then. So is it, can, can yeah. you... Is it affordable then to how, how much one of these things cost? So that one that you're holding is $70. $70, yeah. right, okay. And uh, how many different colors and that have you got? So what's really cool is I actually have the world's largest catalog for flow ropes and it's literally, I have different sizes from the thinnest to the thickest. We actually sold out of all the thick ones today, but um, different sizes when it comes to diameter. And then on, on top of that, something that I added that other companies don't do is I also offer different lengths so that people can uh, shop ropes like they shop clothes. You know what I mean? So your height would be different than mine. And do you have different seasonal colors and designs and that sort of stuff, yeah? Yeah, so this is my fall collection. Right? Oh, nice. So something, there's a little bit of something for everyone, you know? So right, how many people are, are using slush ropes at the moment then? At the moment, I would probably say we're, we're right about 5,000 ropes like all around the world and uh, you know, just taking it day by day. What's your vision for the company then? My vision for the company honestly is to encourage the average person to, to just move and you know, when they find something fun, it, that results in moving their body, they are now, you know, like working on just having a healthier lifestyle. That, that's all it is. Where, it's, where, where, from a marketing perspective, then, what are you? What's your main social media channel that you that you operate? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram for sure. This yeah. looks like it's, it could also work for a younger audience on things like TikTok. Do, do you do much on there? You know, to be honest, because I do almost everything <laughs> behind the company, so I want to get into TikTok, but also uploading content there is a little different as well. You got to be a little more Gen Z, and I'm a millennial, so that, that's a little hard for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I'm really impressed because it's, uh, I, I, as I said, I met David, he first introduced me and then I, I started to sort of go down and see the people that he was connecting with and then I found you guys. And, um, and it's, just, it's really impressive how to take something like a rope and create a business and a story and I'm, I'm sure, I, you know, I really, I'm, I'm sure you'll be extremely successful and, um, and I, I look forward to seeing what, what will happen over the next few years. But, but you really... Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you know you've done a fantastic job. You, you deserve uh, you deserve all the success that you'll have. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mark from England. Where about England from, Mark? Uh, Bristol. What Bristol, are you doing over yeah. here in LA? Well, I actually live in China. Have a factory <laughs> and manufacturing in China. So we're in LA to launch our new product, the Flex. Okay. All right. Well, tell us all about it. Okay. So the Flex is a portable home gym. Uh, it launches by Bluetooth to an application. You can instantly adjust the uh, resistance of the unit. So it's an all-in-one gym system that you can do from four to 44 pounds with the slide of a button on your application. So for example, tricep extension. If you have a feel of that, I don't know whether you can have a feel with the microphone. No, Maybe yeah. down, okay, there you go. Okay, that's interesting. So it actually, it's, um, it loads on both directions then? Correct, yes. yes. All right. So it comes with a door attachment, so you can load, attach it to the door. You, uh, you can attach it under that. the door. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it comes with the handle, all in a travel case. So it's TSA approved, so you can take it on a flight with you. Very convenient. Uh, the alternative is obviously carrying a big bag of bands, resistance right. bands. This you can sew in your pocket. So what? What it, can you change the resistance on it at all? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this is the application. This could be on your smartphone. But as you, if you can see, you can slide all the way down to four pounds, all the way up to 44 pounds, just with the side of a button. Nice. And, and that's that. That's represents your app. This I guess. is represents okay. the app. So yeah, and then you can have a lot of training program so you've got over a hundred different exercises in the database you can pre-program a workout into there monitors your reps your resistance the calories burnt um, can you uh, um, can you change concentric and eccentric loading or absolutely you can yeah that's pretty cool so there's the mode yeah eccentric load concentric load so you can have two different resistance if you wanted to load up that eccentric you could do so you right. can half it and the concentric how long did it take you to develop this then uh, this has been in development for over three years. Um, I wish we had it. We have a robot dog here that we're launching. I saw it the over there, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, so <laughs> the same technology from the robot dog is into our smart gym unit. So it's a really cool product, yeah. So where, what's, what markets are you selling into? And uh, The US we're concentrating on at the moment for the launch, but right. yeah, looking all across, all across Europe, Australia, yeah, UK. How long have, has it been on, on sale to the public? As of yesterday, so this oh, is really? the second day of the show. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I've seen another version on Instagram that kind of like a little... I, well, you must know the one. It's like a little block. Hey, is this? Do, do you know what I mean? There's yeah, a, this is a, a lot cheaper, a lot more portable, and actually is a much better app and is much more integratable. So we have it. You can fit it into a, a rack system at home as well, for example. Okay. So it's not just for home use. It's for yeah travel, but also you can replicate a cable system. So if you have an existing rack at home, instead of having to buy a cable system, you can just slot it on. So what do you a, buy this? Um... This is just an accessory that you okay. would buy on. And then right. we also have the platform you can see over there so you can double it up you could have two units each side so you could double the resistance if this was obviously too light for you you could really wrap that up right but what kind of weight can you go up to on it so the maximum per unit is 44 pounds okay. but you would be surprised we've had some big guys doing chest flies 44 pounds each side is actually quite a lot this yeah, way yeah what's the price of one of those stations so one the, of those boxes. the unit that comes with the box and the travel case is 349 so that comes with your handle that comes with your tricep pull down your door attachments and then things like the base the cage attachment they're extras that we'll add on that's pretty cool and what what, what is it like a uh, is it just your is it a company is it a private it's company three or? brits we own the company yeah and we've been in china since 2005 so uh we own a factory there where we do all our manufacturing right so what's your background then how did you get into doing this kind of stuff wow yeah I worked at Airbus for seven years back in the UK, then I was looking for some opportunities, went traveling in China, uh, ran into my business partner Nick, who's here at the show. Uh, that was yeah, almost 20 years ago. Man. We've built an empire since. We have over 150 people working for us. In nice. China. Yeah, very cool. And this is something that I've seen around on Instagram as well. What? Tell us a bit about this one. Shogun, this is kind of the known product. It's a posterior chain exercise unit. So it does back extensions and Nordic curls, which are, many of you are aware of. Are yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. Pretty popular exercise. So it doubles from, that's the back extension position. So just a few slides of the button. Switch it okay. to the Nordic car. Oh, cool. So what was this? Is this a commercial? I've seen this in some gyms. Uh, so is this a commercial? Well, and I mean, a it's, a, it's a private unit right. typically, but it's commercial grade quality. So a lot of people are using it for that application. Right. Yeah. People I mean, are into CrossFit, sports specific, 
Uh, the posterior chain is obviously very critical for sprinting, yeah, weightlifting, powerlifting. Yeah, it looks to be quite, the, the quality of it looks yeah. to be pretty heavy. I don't know whether heavy. you've tried in Nordic, but it's yeah, a pretty, have, really yeah. hard yeah. exercise, yeah. 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 And I've seen a few of the, um, I think Atlantis uh, do, do one, like a low one, which is quite nice, but right. this is quite good because it does two things in one. And also it has a, it has a progression system, so you can raise this up so it can be at an angle. So as you progress, you can just rip, lower that down. Oh, here we go, speak of the devil. Ah. Here we go. <laughs> So the same technology of the shoulder joint of the dog has been adapted into the smart gym unit. Right. So what do you guys make robots or something then? Is that why you, your main part uh, of the company? No, our main, our main company is based around uh, product assembly. So we do a lot of contract manufacturing for companies, but side, aside to that, we've developed a few of our own brands, one of which is the sports side show. Right. And just back on this, so what's what's the retail price on this unit? Uh, the full retail price is $1,000. Right. Um, but we have some various, we usually have a discount running where it's about eight fifty. Right. Yeah, to the public. And where do, where do people find out about this? Are you direct to consumer or do you sell through distribution partners? Typically direct to consumer, so for our website, showgunsports.com. All right. Okay, mate. Well, awesome. great to meet you. Yeah, great Good to meet you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, yeah, thank you, mate. Cheers. Kelly. Yes. How are you doing? Good. Wonderful. I've uh, been trying your, your what, are you, what is it called? A supplement? What do you, what do you call? No, we can't call it a supplement. Okay. It's just a, a, a kratom. It's a botanical. It comes from Indonesia. Right. Now, yesterday I came and you... You gave me a small bottle of this, which yes. I'll sort of show to anyone on camera. Um, and um, you said, give it a go and, and see what you think. So I, I tried it. I had a few interviews I did yesterday. And it was kind of, it, my experience was it was a little bit like a kind of a coffee sort of feel. So I had a little bit of a buzz, but a calm buzz. It wasn't like a, a sort of caffeinated sort of high in a crash. It was just a nice feeling. And it was it's quite good to focus on my interviews, to be honest. So I don't know whether that's typical for anyone that's taken it. Yeah, so it, it, a couple of things happen when people use the product is they, they do experience a, a few different things. Some people will experience um, a, a sense of well-being. Some people will experience, um, you know, evidence of, of pain-free living. Some experience uh, focus, more desired focus of what they're looking for. So there, there's quite a few uh, uses for it. And when and depending on your usage, um, you, you'll get a different experience that comes from it. The beauty about our product is it is unadulterated. It is pure. Um, there's lots of companies out there that, that do Kratom, but a lot of them, they do put additives and residuals into their, their product where we don't. We have that process down enough where it, it stays completely pure and the way the leaf should be. What is Kratom? So Kratom is a, a tree that grows in Indonesia and in some parts of Thailand. It comes in, what's happened is hundreds of years ago, the, the farmers would chew on the, the Kratom leaves and they would say that it would make their day a little bit more easy. And, and as years went by, we were one of the very first companies to, to bring Kratom into the United States. And They'll, they'll bring it in as far as uh, crushed leaf and they'll, they'll dry it, crush it, put it into powders or they'll pull the extracts from the from the leaves. And that's what this particular product is. And then what happened is they brought it over here and people started seeing the uses of it and, and the experiences that they're feeling from it. And, and then like anything that gets out there, people begin to take advantage of it and, the, and then scrutiny comes because of it. Hey, this is doing this, it must be bad. Or, this is doing this, it must be good. Um, and, and lots of lots of things happening. Uh, well, then of course, Big Pharma will see that. And if they think it's something good, they're going to want to stop it because it could put a damper in, you know, their bottom end. Or um, if there's not enough research out there, then the FDA, of course, is not going to approve it either because it, it, it's still fairly new as far as um, inside the United States industry of what it is. We've had a battle and a fight that we've been trying to do about our leaf to let people know the goodness that comes from the leaf and, and the experience that people can have from it. And the, the reason we came to market with ours is because it is pure, so we're not trying to mix it with other products. We're not trying to uh, put it into a food item or anything like that. We're just trying to let people see the leaf in its natural form and also 
experience it the way that it's supposed to be experienced. That's why we did it. Are there any negative side effects to it? I was talking to my colleague who I brought over, Brendan, and uh, you know, when you have coffee, you kind of have a little bit of a buzz, then you kind of have this crash, and you feel a little bit crack, you know, a little bit groggy and sort of strung out a little bit. So what, what's what's the sort of pros and cons of this then? So it's been reported that uh, people have used it, depending on the usage that happens, they can uh, they can experience not necessarily a crash, but it will taper off mildly, which is nice. But well, then what ends up happening is that the experience that they're feeling, whether it's well-being or a sensation of good, uh, pain-free or whatever, that we, that will come back. It's not it's not a cure for anything at all, and, and we would never say that it is, or nor make any health claims on it. But it's it is something that if you quit using it, it what you used it for will come back again. So. But as far as the, the negatives that are out there, um, side effects and things like that happen, that comes when they pick you adulterate the product and you mix it and put other stuff in it. Um, some people have put um, items inside Kratom that can be addictive. And when they take that, it can become a, a, a big, an addictive product. But again, that's something that we don't have any part of, and we don't know. We don't know what they do. Or care. I, 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 yesterday when I had it, I, I was just saying to Brandon, it, it was just a gradual, you know, just just kind of taper down. There was no sort of big big change particularly, which is quite which is quite interesting. Um, you know, I could see. I could see me taking it if I was having to do some work and focus for a, for a while. But you also said uh, earlier that if you're working out, it, it connects, it, it helps you push through that sort of pain barrier. So talk it a little does. bit about that. So there's a, a, anybody who experiences working out or has done it on competitive or even just on, on conventional motions, they, they hit what's kind of called the mind muscle block. They get working out and it, it starts to burn, so they stop. Their muscles didn't give out, but their mind gave out because it hurt, so they stopped doing that. Uh, people who have used this have experienced that, that they, if they get past that mind muscle block, so they're able to keep pushing through further than they were able to do before, which in turn, their body reacts to it and allows them to either tear the muscle down more so it can repair bigger, and, or for instance, if they're doing cardio, and they get tired, I can't do it anymore, just way too much, that they can go past that barrier as well. So a lot of the athletes that um, have used our product before, they report that I can go very long durations of cardio, and normally they've not been able to do that. That helps them in their diet just to help peak them and get them the best benefits of their workout. Is there any downside of pushing yourself through that? barrier at all you know are you can you sort of take it the other extent where you end up injuring yourself because you're well, I, in any uh, working out especially with weights or that you're always at the risk of, of an injury and what ends up happening so obviously you want to do it where you're uh, hopefully that you've got the education and background enough to know that okay I'm only going to go this this far instead of pushing to the point of injury so uh, this doesn't necessarily say okay I'm going to push and I'm going now I can create an injury and just keep pushing past that it's, it's not that way it's more of a okay I can go maybe one or two reps more than I have done before in the past or maybe I can go 15 minutes further on cardio or whatever it, it's not saying okay Hey, I'm going to throw on 700 pounds when I used to only work out with 300. It, yeah. it doesn't do that. It doesn't make you stronger or anything like that. I can imagine, like after trying it, I can imagine what it does do. Comparing it to something like a, a pre-workout, almost, I think it can just dial you in mentally to what you're doing. And I sometimes, you know, when, when you're in that zone in the workout, you 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 can push yourself a little bit further. Whereas sometimes when you're not quite in the zone, you're like, okay, I'm done there. So it seems to, I don't know whether it works psychology, psychologically or physically, but I can imagine that you just kind of get into it and you put your earphones on and you're gonna, but that's how I imagine that sort of right. thing reacting. Right. Absolutely, like, just like when people will put on their favorite song to get a pump to move them a little bit more. This is one of those things that can help them do the same type of thing. You just push a little further than they normally would. Now I understand there's some restrictions in terms of where this can and can't be sold. Talk a little bit about the 
legal status of the product and, and the countries that can buy it and sell it and that kind of stuff. So the product right now is not approved by the FDA. Um, in our, and as such, we don't make any claims. We let everybody know it's not approved by the FDA. However, we do stay F FDA compliant, which means we follow the main rules that the FDA has put for for Kratom use, which means you don't mix it with other products, um, that you don't make the health claims of what it is that it can do. We don't do any of those. We try, we try our hardest to stay compliant because we want regulation on the product. The more regulation that comes, the more it's going to stop the abuse of the, the product that's being out there. Now, as a result right now, there are many states that have age restrictions on Kratom. Some of them might be 18. I believe there's a couple that are even 21. But for the most part, I think 30 of the states, and this don't quote me, but I think 30 of the states, there's no restrictions whatsoever on age that are out there. Um, there are a few states, I think five of them, that it's not legal in. In California, you cannot uh, buy Kratom in San Diego. The rest of the California that you can. Um, as far as the countries, uh, it is legal in the United States, it's legal in Mexico, it's legal in, in Canada. But every one of the state or every one of the countries have their own little parameters of how Kratom can be used, sold, or taken. So I would encourage anybody who is interested in Kratom to get on and online and do some research about it to find out where it where it's legal and where you can take it out in your home. In Europe, it's not legal yet, is that right? It is not in the UK. Any any part of the UK or the uh, part that the UK has government over in Australia, Cayman Islands or whatnot, it is not legal in the UK. No. Right. Okay. And um, where are you, like if people want to buy it, like how are they, are you selling it online? Are you selling it through affiliates? Yes. What's the, yeah, what's the process? Yeah, they online and buy it. Um, Buy it at yourkratom.com if you get it. You can buy it at a lot of nutrition um, stores that are now starting to carry it. Gyms are carrying it. What nutrition stores have you got it in? So the, the big chain stores do not carry it yet because they want it to be FDA approved, which is completely understandable. Some of them on pa stores that do carry it. Um, Whole Foods carries uh, Kratom. They carry oh, really? it in raw leaf form. So, so there's more and more places all over that are starting to carry Kratom or they'll carry it. Uh, uh, drinks that contain Kratom in them. A lot of convenience stores now carry Kratom in the convenience stores and 7-Elevens or, or right. stores could be similar to that, you know, that, that they have them in. Is it like the next CBD kind of thing, do you think? Absolutely, I do. <laughs> I think where Kratom is right now is where CBD was 10 years ago and I think it's just a matter of time that the world will realize the benefits that the leaf can have and it will be FDA approved and then pretty soon you're going to see it in dog treats and you'll end up seeing it everywhere. Is there much medical research around the, the physical, mental benefits of this yet? So there is more and more right now popping up all the time. There is a new research that just came up in January of 2024 that you're able to pull up. In fact, I would encourage anybody to Google and pull up. So there's a, just like on anything, you can find scrutiny about the product and then you can find the good about it if you dig in there. But there is more and more clinicals that are being done and there is more medical research that are happening every day on it. All right, Kelly, thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, I appreciate it. Tommy, are you gonna hit me around the head with this big bat or what, what's going on here? No, of course not. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit, but. So explain to me what this is and, uh, and, and, and why you're carrying it. So this is the Dragon Slayer, and it is designed to be a leverage-based strength training tool where it trains strength not just with the amount of weight, which is only 20 pounds, but rather the displacement of weight, which is over the course of six feet. Now, anybody with a little bit of physics knows that leverage times mass changes the weight, so I put you that sentence. But um, <laughs> but it, sounded, it kind of almost sounded good. Sounded right. I, I have taught a few classes today, so I'm a little tired. But um, uh, it's it trains strength by, first by building strength in a deleveraged position, which most people only move in linear paths. And by teaching people to move first in paths where they're being unevenly loaded, you're building significantly more core strength because you have to brace your core to prevent yourself from being pulled in any direction. And as you get into all kinds of fancy movements with it, which you'll see in the B-roll, you're being tugged and pulled in all different directions, which is going to really make you a stable person. It also helps that it's a massive tax on the grip. I think there is a massive lack of extremely strong grip strength that is built through a lot of functional training. And 
I think grip is the most important aspect of training because it's how you relate to the world. It doesn't matter if you could bench or throw something with you know, 90 pounds of force, if your grip can only support 70, you lose out everything that your grip cannot support. Yeah, I was, I was uh, listening to someone a little while ago saying grip strength is connected to longevity as well. Absolutely. There is a... I don't know exactly strength. how that and why that... Well, there's two would... things. First, it's... If you still have a strong grip as you're older, it's generally a sign that you're staying in shape. Staying in shape has a massive length of life extension. It also plays a part, though, in being able to catch yourself if you fall. If you fall and you can grab a railing, you won't fall. If you fall and you grab the railing and you slip, you still foul. So anyone knows that as you're getting older, falls become an increasing risk of injury and even death. So it helps with that. There's another statistic uh, pretty similar about push-ups, and I think it's that if you can do uh, 11 push-ups, your risk of dying of a cardiac event is dropped by, I think, over 50%, and if you can do over 40 push-ups, it drops by over 96%, wow, which is huge. Yeah. How did you come up with this idea then? I was inspired uh, by anime and video game series like Berserk and Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your first one like? There's a bunch of different objects um, on the floor. What are, what are you calling these? Dragon Slayers. They're Dragon Slayers. So, so what, what's the relevance of the various different shapes? The first one was shaped like this, except it was a little bit more crude. It didn't have the rounded edges at the bottom. It didn't have a rounded handle or a rounded uh, base of the blade. It was very squared off, and that's a little bit harder to wield. As I made more and more of them, I improved the design, and uh, then I added the holes so that I could attach weights onto them to make it even heavier. Okay. And what, what's this? What, there's, there's a bat-shaped oh, yeah, looking so one here. What's this? These are the dragonfly clubs, which is my take on uh, Persian and Indian club swinging exercises, which is one of the oldest forms of strength training and also a massive inspiration for the dragon slayer training. And it's similar but different. Dragon slayer training is generally two-handed and has a lot of functional movements where the arms are crossing over each other. Being up and low and you have one arm pushing and one arm pulling. Club swinging is usually one arm at a time and you have these circular movements where you use momentum to guide the club around and you control with that. And that's also amazing for improving the kinetic chain, getting your muscles to work together, improving coordination, and of course, stability, because holding a weight that's stacked up like this requires wrist stability rather than holding something balanced like this. Right. There's obviously a lot of skill that goes into these various different movements compared to someone lifting a, a dumbbell. Yes. What, what, uh, what are you guys doing from an education perspective? Um, we're releasing online content um, in the form of courses, short tutorials, and longer form YouTube videos so that people can learn how to use the Dragon Slayer safely and effectively. And beyond that, we're coming to places like this, which you know we're fortunate enough to have the FedEx go host us and teaching classes and try and spread the message of positive functional fitness education. And we want to put the fun in functional fitness. How long have you been selling the, uh, what, what, are you, what do you call them again? These, uh, these the ones? clubs? The clubs, yeah. Um, the clubs I just launched a few months ago. Yesterday was actually the one year anniversary of uh, the Dragon Slayers launching as a product. Where are you making them? I make them in Chicago. Everything is handmade in America. By you? Um, mostly by me. I've started outsourcing as I couldn't <laughs> keep up with it myself, but I very literally started in my backyard with power tools, moved to my uncle's garage, and then um, once that was, couldn't even keep up. I moved to a wood shop that I started renting, and then I started outsourcing some of this, started hiring people, and yeah, it's been growing from there. What's the plan for the company? How are you gonna, how do you wanna scale this? Online courses are going to be extremely important because Dragon Slayers are a one-time purchase. Um, I'd like to break into apparel as well, and I'd like to break into other forms of training as well. I have a really long background in training for injury prevention and recovery. I started in functional fitness because I tore my labrum. I was told I needed surgery and repaired it without surgery. So I know how to take someone who has this much of a range of motion and get them to here, back here, back here, getting one arm pull-ups, all the above, pain-free, and I can do that with no equipment. So. I'd like to be teaching more of that stuff as well. I'd love to break into apparel. I mean, beyond just you know basic tank tops. There's a lot of ways it could go. Uh, the most important thing is building a really strong community of people who want to improve, 
want to have fun while they're working out and see the potential in this type of training. Excellent. And where can people find more out about you, your education, your products? Everything is on Ashman Athletics, and that's at Ashman Athletics on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Um, my personal, well, my business email is thomas at ashmanathletics.com. I still try to answer every single question I'm asked. And uh, yeah. Well, kudos to you. It's great that you've been able to start a business about something that you're passionate about. I love the education. I love the idea around the product. You're actually making it yourself. So uh, I wish you I wish you all the success. And, Thank you, uh, Matthew. Look, looking forward to seeing you next year here as well. Thank you. You as well. Thanks very much. Rick, I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay. What do you got going on here? We have a brand new fitness item. It's revolutionizing the strength conditioning market. It's called platos. Platos. Yes, which is Spanish for plates. So it just happens to be a five pound plate, a two and a half and a 10 pound. But what makes it rather unique is the opening, allows you to put your whole hand and hold it. But then no, further- Let me give it a go. So you, you, so you, so you use it like this, like a- well, Like just like a, that, that is literally a dumbbell kettlebell and a replaceable plate. Okay. But what makes it even more unique is we can take a two and a half, place it, twist it, lift it, and we went from a two and a half and a five pound dumbbell or kettlebell to a seven and a half pound. Okay. And how does it, does it sort of move? Does it stay like um... It stays in its place. We have what we call our gorilla grip. And the gorilla grip is the four fingers, the thumb and the palm that keep it in place with simple pressure and keeps it from unlocking and separating. So this happens to be a 10 pound. We can go 12 and a half, 15, 17, 20, 22, 25, 27 in seconds. And it fits right on Olympic bar. Okay. So platos literally can replace a dumbbell, a kettlebell, and Olympic plates. Why did, why did you come up with this? <laughs> it was uh, fall of 2019. I'm teaching a class at East Los Angeles College. What and kind I of class? Uh, fitness class. Oh, fitness class. Right. Okay. Are you a fitness, fitness trainer? I was a kinesiology professor for 27 years. And um, I want to introduce a class of nothing but beginners to a routine, a dumbbell routine. So I told them, go get some dumbbells you can handle. And our fitness lab didn't have enough light dumbbells. So they go, oh, there's no more dumbbells. I go, well, go get plates. And just use the plates. Okay. So I'm, I'm running the, the, the routine, and some of them have dumbbells, and some of them have plates. I go, oh, that's kind of cool. It work, but kind of dangerous. You know, they're only holding those two fingers. So on the way home, I'm driving, and said, they should just make one with a bigger hole. Then the next thing is, well, we need to stack it. Well, we need to make it extra thin so we can stack more of them. So here's three. This bit's pretty interesting, actually, because you're right. Like it, um, the way you've got it. Did you did you manage to get a pan on this? Oh yes. Oh, okay, I was going to say. Pan international pan. That's very. I got a it's pad very, on a pad. It's actually very clever the way that this fits onto a regular Olympic bar. Yes. Pretty good. It, um, it has the. And then you've got the handle in the middle. Little in here. Yeah. That keeps it from sliding. So yeah. here's what uh, even more unique. If you put four plates together, right. whether it's two and a half, fives, or tens, it's not going to get thicker. Yeah. It doesn't get bigger. What do you mean? This oh, is just only, because this is because, only fine. because these are thinner. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, you okay. can make, you can get 40 pounds, yeah. and, a small and it's going to be the yeah. same as yeah. that. I guess I guess the only thing, like, it's nice to have the rubber covering for some people, which is what makes it thicker. But I do think this bit's really smart. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I think this is a real smart idea. Absolutely. Um, and. Uh, 
because if you think about a lot of plates, they have the handles on the outside, um, and you've, you've essentially got the handle on the inside, which the is inside. which is pretty cool. So I love with, it. With the testing, it, it, you have more balance. That's smart. The weight is equally, equally distributed. Right. And if you get, for example, um, a Bowflex uh, adjustable dumbbell, that's 18 and a half inches wide. So if you do a movement, you got this huge bar in your face, or this is our biggest plate. Yeah. You're only talking five and a half inches. Yeah, I like it. I think the holes even better than the way they link together. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's genius. And we have a lot of young ladies who have long nails. Okay. So if you put it down, press, yeah, right. Smart. So and what's, now, what are these? Is this like a carry bag for them yes. as well? Yes. Our carry bags have four pockets. So it's in case you want to go shopping and just do some curls on the way yeah. back or something. You know. So <laughs> this happens to be our mini bag or mini bundle. Right. Two, two, uh, two fives, two, two and a halves. Goes in here a total of 15 pounds. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Take it anywhere. Take it anywhere. Take just, it to the beach. Take it on a pump on. Take it on site at the Fit Expo. <laughs> well, look, thank you. I think it's a very smart idea. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your Matthew, time. Matthew, good name. <laughs> Dr. Tracy from Calo Curve. Hi. I saw, I was reading the background, and we've done a bunch of stuff about these GLP ones as MPIC, and yep. this kind of got my interest um so i'd like you to tell me about it sure so this is um out of the out of new zealand research government funded 25 million dollars spent 10 years of research looking for products that would work on glp1 to help curb appetite and i'm just so i'm going to pause you there. what is glp1 so glp1 is glycogen like peptide it's a hormone produced in the gut normally when we eat and as the hormone level is, as you eat, you produce GLP-1, which works on your stomach to slow down stomach emptying, goes to your brain where it works on hunger and food cravings, all of which combine to reduce your appetite. So you don't keep eating. It's way, like satiety. It gives you satiety and helps with food cravings. Okay. And so it's a natural hormone. So all the Wagovis, the Azempics, the Manjaros, they're found, they are all uh, what we call analogs of GLP-1. So they are like a chemical version, not exactly the same, but work to produce the same effects. And they are injected and they are very effective, but you're putting very high levels at a very unnatural sort of biorhythm. Whereas our product literally follows the normal biorhythm. When you eat, you produce GLP-1. When you take a when you take a callow curve an hour beforehand, you produce the same um, GLP-1, but at twice the level. Plus, we produce a couple of other gut hormones that work on feeling full as well. Okay, so so the Azempex, for example. You, you'll inject, or I think some of them are now tablet-based or whatever, but you, so you'll take this throughout the day, and what that'll do, that'll raise your level of GLP-1 so that you don't feel hungry. Is that kind of well, how... The, the Ozempics are using a, what we like to call a, a um, simulated GLP-1. Okay. We stimulate your own GLP-1. Oh, interesting. So ours is your own actual hormone produced at a more, at a higher rate. Okay rather than creating an, uh, an artificially raised analog or simulated version. Interesting. So we have much fewer side effects too. What, what, what's in this then uh, to be able to stimulate yeah. your GLP-1s then? So what is in this? The active ingredient is a, is a molecule called Amarasate. It's patented. And it was, That's always good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was, um, it was a, the result of a lot of research looking for very bitter, I have to say for an American audience, American bitter. Bitter. Bitter, you know what I mean. Bitter and butter. Bitter foods. <laughs> because bitter foods stimulate taste receptors in the gut that release GLP-1. It's kind of like up. If you think back when we were hunter gatherers and we're out there eating, you know, whatever we can find, and we eat something really bitter, it's likely to have been toxic. Often, bitter foods are bad. You know, they were poison, and so it made sense to have a, a, a gut response that stopped you continuing to eat that, oh, that food. So this is what bitter foods can do. They can stimulate that those receptors in the gut, these bitter taste receptors, and they literally, in response, release the GLP-1 and the other hormones that. Uh, evolutionarily good for us. That's very interesting. That's a, that's a great story. 
well, a very simple story, yeah. but it's one that you can yeah. make mean, makes a lot of sense. The original research was based off the idea that in certain times of um, hardship, or uh, like um, in Scotland, when they were going through a famine, people would eat a very bitter. There was a bit of root they would eat to just curb their hunger. When Kalahari tribesmen went hunting on a long hunt and they weren't going to eat for a few days, they had a bitter food they would eat to curb their hunger. And so that's why people knew to start looking for particularly for bitter food. So they literally looked at about a thousand different plant types and they found that the New Zealand, that an extract from New Zealand hops, also used for making beer, <laughs> um, had exactly the effect they wanted. And they did lots of clinical studies, laboratory studies. We've got studies in 24 hour fasting where people had reduction in hunger over the last eight hours of 100% compared to the people having placebo. Really? How long has this been on the market then? It's been on the market in New Zealand for five years. Um, we've got anecdotal reports of weight loss up to 100 pounds. But what I love is that we're doing another clinical study right now. They're, they're um, enrolling a clinical study with 150 people with a BMI of 30 or more looking at the input of weight loss. So a six-month study. So, you know, we know we've got the anecdotal evidence, but we're now going to have the clinical trials to support our other earlier trials. And I just love the fact, you know, an all-natural substance that's following the, the natural biorhythm of how you would produce this anyway. And our our side effect profile, like occasionally people get a little bit of a loose tummy to start, which is in big contrast to some of the issues with the, the Wigovizia Zempix. You know, they're being investigated for more and more reports of strange things. Right. Like, you know, yeah. So. What, what countries are, is this now being available in? It's um, obviously available here in the States. It's obviously available in New Zealand. It's about to be launched into Australia. We had to get, you know, you have to get approval for the facilities. We've got FDA and TGA, that's the Australian um, approval of the facilities, because it's actually put into capsules here in the States. The extract comes from New Zealand and then encapsulated here. Um, and I think they're launching into Europe. They had a very good response in the UK. They're just waiting to get a facility near the UK so we don't have to pay all the VAT and import taxes over there. Right. And how do you take it? So do you have to see a doctor to get it prescribed? No, no that's what's lovely. It's a nutraceutical, it's a plant extract, it's got three ingredients. It's got the amarasate, which is the, the active ingredient. It's got rosemary oil as an antioxidant and it's got a plant oil as a stabilizer and a multiplier. So it's very, um, it doesn't require a prescription. And you take it, you gradually build your dose up. You know, if you're taking it to lose weight, you start with one before up one meal, so say before lunch. Do that for a few days, then add in a second meal. And then do that for a few days and gradually build up so it's about two before two meals a day. Now, not everybody needs that. They may be more sensitive and only need one, or they may use it in a different way. For example, if I know I'm gonna miss, um, you know, I've been disorganized and I'm not gonna get dinner, I'll take one of these and have that instead of, you know, my dinner. It's just, you know, not how we necessarily say, but for weight loss, you just build it up, so it's very simple. Right. And it also means because of the way you take it, you can tailor it to whatever your weight loss needs are, or whatever your you know your your man, your weight management needs are. It might not even be weight loss; it's just weight management over a certain time. What about costs? I know people that have taken a Zempic, and it's it's quite at the moment, particularly in America, it's something that celebrities take because they're one of the few people that can afford to take it. <laughs> How does this compare from a, on a month by month basis? Well, one of these bottles has 90 capsules, 90, and that retails for about online about $70. I mean, I think if you do it as a regular, you can get a slight discount on that. I mean, we obviously have show specials, but yeah. So around about 60 to $70 a bottle, which is much more reasonable. And yeah. for many people, that may last them more than a month. For others, it might be that they need one every three weeks. But. And uh, how are you, what's your distribution model for the product? So at the moment, we have an online store and we're very excited because we really want to get into practitioners and all sorts of different fields, like definitely functional medicine, gyms, um, health, uh, health coaches, aesthetic clinics, aesthetic practices like, you know, nurses and doctors, um, you know, basically anywhere where people are interested in managing their weight and their health right. through weight management. I think, I think it's pretty interesting. I guess the big thing that people are going to say is, is it really as effective as the Azempex and that out there? Like, uh, based on, without over inflating any claims, like, kind of where, where would it sit on yeah. in, in comparison, realistically? Well, we can't, you know, be certain, we can't really compare 
completely because it, that clinical trial for weight loss is just being done. But I think for me, I think the thing to think about is that look, it's not going to. It's when we don't expect them to have like you know some of the azepic things, which are literally dampen your appetite down like the whole time. Because remember, I said it's at a very high level all the time, even when you sleep. So I don't expect it to have those sorts of levels. But a couple of things. I think it's the perfect adjunct to anybody who's either taking Ozempic and is worried that they're not producing their own GLP-1 anymore, which is a very oh, okay. um, strong hypothesis people have at the moment. Because why would your body need to make it when it's being handed a, a so sort of So because it's shutting it off and it might not. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And yeah. secondly, if you um, have got to a point with one of those skinny shots, well, you can't, you're not taking it anymore. Now, there's a number of reasons. It could be that um, you can't tolerate it suddenly, or you've hit your goal weight, fantastic, or you can't afford it, or you hate giving yourself an injection, or you didn't find the pills very effective. This is the perfect, what I call, exit strategy. So for people who have been on those, those medications, this is something they can either, you know, start to add in while they're taking it, or even or just know they've got something when they stop it, that will help them maintain their good eating habits. Fantastic. Um, Dr. Tracy, what's the website that people can go to find out more? Calocurb.com, or an American at Calocurb. Calocurb, which is C-A-L-O-C-U-R-B.com. Yes. Awesome. Sounds very exciting. Thank yeah, you very much for sharing that with me. Thank you. Thank nice you. To nice to meet you. Jack, yes. Duonamic. Yes. This got my attention as well. Tell me a bit about yes. your product. So yeah, we sell the world's best portable fitness equipment. And this is a portable pull-up bar that clamps up to your door frame. A portable pull-up bar. Correct. Okay. And we also offer different attachments. So we got rings attachments to do calisthenics moves. And we also got a hand portable hangboard attachment to train your finger strength. And also we got a yoga hammock to do stretching and recovery. What was the inspiration behind this? Are you a fitness trainer, a product developer? Um, product more product developer. I used to travel a lot for work. So I just needed something portable that I can throw into a backpack and take the fitness with me. Okay. So talk me through how this works and the key parts sure. to it. Sure, so the key parts to this is it's a clamping system. So it clamps onto your door trim and we also have molded a soft non micron plastic on top so it doesn't damage your door frame. And it also, it's got the spring and locks in so it doesn't fall off your door trim. Right, so when you pull it down, it, it, it exactly. squeezes, it squeezes these together. Exactly, so you don't fall off. All right, um, so, so what we've got here then is this is an example of a of yeah, a door. Exactly. So that's there's a mock-up of a door. Okay. And you can just throw it on and it just locks it in. Okay. So talk me through the different kind of exercises and things that you would do. You talk about grip strength, so Yeah, so for the regular handles, it's more pull-ups, a lot of maybe some core strength, so like L sits. Nice. And then you can change the the, the handles. Yeah, so it. we designed it so this to be interchangeable, so you can actually take this off. And then you can throw a different uh, product on there, so it'll be out of frame. So we can have, for example, okay. this is a portable hangboard. So this, you would put your fingers here and you train your finger strength. Oh, nice. Yeah, we also got a ring set up. And how long have you had this product in the market then? So we've been on the market for about four years now, and it took us about four years to design and a couple of years to figure out manufacturing. So yeah, this is our ring setup. So the strap, you can actually adjust the length, and then you can do from dips, push-ups, to muscle-ups. Right. What's the price of this one? So price of this one, MSRP is 99 USD. And then uh, these ones, the full packages, around 209 USD. This is nice. So where, you, where are you making it? It's very nicely Everything's made finished. in Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And how are you, what's the different uh, ways that you're selling it? What's, are you selling direct to consumer or are you selling it through Yeah, mostly Amazon? direct to consumer. We have, we're on Amazon too. Everyone's got to be on Amazon these days. Right. Yeah, yeah. And what about how to, any workouts or any education that goes with it? Yeah, we have these. Like Trey, for example, he helps us out with the workouts. So we, we post on Instagram different workouts that we can do. Okay. Uh, do you have any kind of app, app or anything like that? No, not, with, not right now at the moment. Just keeping yeah. it very simple. Just the fitness products right now. And how long did it take you from the original idea before you got the thing to market? It took about five years. 
five years. Yeah, so it's our first product, so we wanted to be safe. So yes. we went through all the prototyping, mm -hmm. a lot of development and testing. And then once we were happy, we launched it. And, and what was the, what was the cost of the moldings on this? Because they're quite, it was quite a lot of work to go Exactly. So it required about six different molds. Well, yeah, I'll just say it's expensive. We all gonna give you the numbers right now. But it was quite a lot. Yeah. What about did you manage to get any intellectual property around it at all? Yeah, we got a patent for Elvia, and we also got patent for Power Holes. Right. Okay. So what's your vision for the company then? Uh, I think we want to be the number one calisthenics product brand on the right. market. Do you work with the guys over at WCO? Bro? I think some of the athletes came and tried it and then they enjoyed the product. Right. Yeah. So you, you got any other products up your sleeve? We do, yeah. We have two other products launching this year. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you, are you going to share a little bit about what they're... Uh, what... More figure strength training. So like a back grip, so like a larger diameter. We need a grip on. And I've seen quite a bit with grip strength. What's that? Why? why... What, what's the relevance? Why are you interested in that particular area? Grip strength is like critical for you for fitness just because you grip everything. And then also like grip, grip strength is also an indication of how well you how long you're gonna live too. So we want to help people have longevity and everything. I was just over another booth and someone else said that. There's this research about grip strength yeah. and its relevance to longevity. What what do you think the connection? Is it just well, that? It's an indication of how strong you are. Because of how much you can lift. It's all right. dictated by your grip strength. Okay, cool. Well, thanks. Again, yeah. I hope to see you next year where there's Definitely. not people behind us doing deadlifts. <laughs> Jaka, tell us all about Zia. Yes, so Zia, we sell motorized inversion tables. We have our standard and our pro. In functionality, they work the same. They just handle a little bit more weight if you have the pro version. The whole purpose of this machine is to decompress your spine. Obviously, you've seen inversion tables all throughout the market. However, ours is a little different because we operate with a motor. Right. So with the touch of a button, you can actually flip all the way upside down. You don't so do you want to kind of, do you want to give me a go on this? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Perfect. Is it good? Is it going to be good for my back? It's so great for your back because it relieves all that pressure you're feeling from walking around and carrying around any weights. Right. Beautiful. So you're going to make sure that your ankles are nice and comfortable. Beautiful. Right. And from here, I'm going to have you do it for me now, okay? I you operate it. the machine. You press this button right here to close the ankles. Oh, okay. So make sure you're nice and tight. You hold it onto it and yeah. make sure it's nice and snug. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Next up, you want to make sure when you're using this machine that your back and your neck is well supported with our with our board. Okay. Okay? I'm going to grab your hand right here and you're going to put your hand on this. Okay? okay. Once you press this, you control how far you want to go. All right. Okay. okay? You ready? So what I'm doing this, do you want to talk through what's kind of... Of course. So right now we're about horizontal. Once you're around here, there's no gravitational pull. The lower you get, the more pressure is going to pull you down and your disc and your vertebrae will create more room with the gravitational pull of your own weight. So you can only just go as far as you can tolerate. And the, for the best stretch, you put your hands all the way behind your head and relax. Beautiful. So is this, am I totally at the bottom now? So you're actually not turned it completely vertical. Oh, if you want to go uh, all Batman, you are more than welcome to go further. Yeah. Is this? All the way. There we go. But we only advise you stay like that as long as you can tolerate it. Am I, am I, am I totally Almost. Batman? Almost. You want to go a little oh, further? Oh, go on, go on. Yeah, tell me. Okay, ready? Tell me on the way. We're going completely vertical. Oh, wow. You're held up nice and strong. Beautiful. So do I just hang, oh, okay, do I hang like this now? You just hang loose. Okay. When people say you want to hang out, you tell them this is how you hang now. And, it, and what's the kind of optimal position? Is this sort of? Yep. And this helps completely relieve all the pressure that you're feeling from walking around, doing any squats, any deadlifts, anything like that that provides compression on your back. So how, how long and often do you do so this? So we advise you start easy with a couple seconds or so. If you're able to tolerate longer like you're doing right now, you can stay as long as you're able to tolerate it. And what's, what's kind of a typical thing? Like, what's a normal drill? I would say a minute or two. Okay. And I don't know if you see, a lot of people like to do this, and they slowly build up their stamina. You're honestly a pro. I can't even say like this very long. 
And, and what about, like, um, does it do anything for, like, circulation? And, yes, like, it completely helps with circulation. When you decompress your spine, it actually allows your foramen ovale to allow for blood flow and your nerves to pass through a lot easier. And you can always see your face and how red it gets. That's how you can see how much circulation is going throughout your entire body. And what about your brain? Like, does it make you smart? <laughs> I wouldn't say smarter, you know? Some people are born with a good gene, some people are not. I'm gonna um, help you come right back up with this, okay? But, but, Beautiful. Uh, like, joking apart, like, do, do you, does it help with, um, like, your, how you focus or...? Yes, it can definitely help with increased focus. Obviously, we haven't done any studies ourselves on our end, but there's a lot of studies by surgeons, spine doctors, who that help promote the motorized inversion tables. It feels nice. Yeah, it actually feels super good. You kind of almost feel like you come out of a little daze, like a nap. Yeah, I, I could. Because you got all that circulation. I would. Uh, the reason I say, you know, does it help your brain? I, I can imagine if you're like, um, if you're sort of working on your computer for a yes. while, it just sort of. All that blood pools on your legs, which right. we don't want. We want that blood to be completely circulating throughout your entire body. What about the, so on my feet, it, yes. that's the only bit. Can you totally relax? Will it hold your feet in there or do you have so to like hang on? You, have, you don't have to hang on. The okay. whole purpose is that once you, say that we're in this position, right? After you hit that zero degrees, 180 degrees, the ankles don't move. So right okay. here, your ankles can still tighten and loosen yeah. because it's safe, right? Okay. You're just flat. But once you get past the negative one degrees, the ankles will stop moving. So if you see from here, your ankles can't really move as much as you want it to. Right. It's for safety reasons for obvious. Yeah. So right yeah, here, I your like ankles it. I also feel it a little bit in my hips. Yes. Um, exactly. Your spine health is the most important. It helps dictate how your gait is going to be. So if you have a messed up back, You'll have a messed up gait, you'll have messed up hips, yeah, you'll have yeah. messed up ability to walk straight. How much are you selling these for? So this one is $2,430. This one is $3,500. We're offering a 20% discount for our Fit Expo attendees. And we also offer for wholesale if any gyms, franchises also want to purchase as well. And what's the main difference then? So the only difference between these two is that this one can carry up to 265 pounds and this one can carry 330 pounds. Right. Yes. Yeah, that looks, you know, that one looks a bit more robust. It's, exactly. This one's more for like gym use and this one's more for your everyday home use. Right. Yeah. I would like that at home. Yeah, it's super nice. I'm going to get your nice. card and maybe yes. I'm going to have one. And, and when, do, when do people do it? Like in the morning after they've been laying down so for a while? Or? Morning is the best. Okay. Obviously, you want to wake up and you feel really stiff, right? This machine helps you straighten right up and straighten all the way to the top. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you've got any value from it whatsoever, then please do us a favor, like, subscribe, tell somebody, and that will help us to be able to continue to do more of these and help you escape your own personal limits. Thanks for listening.